Welcome everybody to the Boiler Express podcast. This is episode six, I think, and uh, we got a really good episode coming in tonight. Um, we've got special guest here, uh, former Purdue running back and Mr. Football uh, 2014 in Indiana, uh, Markel Jones. Uh, Markel, thank you so much for being on the podcast. We really appreciate it. And we're excited to um, get to talk to you and, and hear and pick your brain a little bit about Purdue and, and your experience here with us uh, in West Lafayette. Absolutely, man. I appreciate the uh, invite to the uh, podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, um, typically we have a, uh, a kind of an eye in the sky or somebody who uh, is always at each game to kind of tell us, you know, what was the atmosphere like? Uh, what was your thoughts on the game from, you know, watching it live versus uh, uh, us watching it at home? Um, we didn't get that this week, but I did have a friend of mine that was at the game. and He kind of told me about it, he said the, the experience or the atmosphere was really cool, said that, you know, it's awesome to see. Uh, Ross aid consistently have 50,000 plus people in the stands, you know, no matter who we're playing, uh, which is awesome to hear. Um, it was a, it was a tough game and we'll kind of get into that as we, uh, go on throughout the, the, the episode. But, um, the important thing is, is that we pulled out the win. Um, you know, Purdue sits at two and two right now. We're getting ready for Minnesota next week. Um, and so, yeah, we've got a lot to dive into here, but with our, our special guests that we have, uh, we do have some questions for him. And so we want to pick his brain a little bit, you know, hear about his time uh, at Purdue, kind of hear about, you know, what the recruiting process was like. And so um, I think Frank has a, a couple of those questions that we'll go ahead and uh, get started with. Yeah, sounds right. good. Um, so, yeah, to kind of start off, we'll go with kind of a two part question. Um, you wouldn't mind kind of recapping what the recruiting process was like and then uh, to expand on that, uh, what made you pick Purdue? Uh, so for me, the, the recruiting process, and let me know if you guys, if the audio is so just let me know about that. But um, so my recruiting started, I have to say, about two, and it was Jared Parker, Coach Parker, who's, I think he's now okay. in Notre Dame right now. Uh, he came to a um, Columbus High School. Uh, he came, I can't remember which games it was. I think it was towards the end of the season game or a regional game or something like that. And um, I'd been speaking to him, and and uh, and, and it, I, first of all, his personality kind of drew me to the program. And uh, Coach Shoup, lots of offensive coordinator, if you guys have ever had a chance to listen to him speak, the guy is – he could be saying anything he wants to say, and it's going to be like you're going to be drawn. So he was – really good dude and uh, it kind of hit, hit off from there and, and then also so really with the um, wanting to go into flight that was a huge selling point for me it kind of itself because of the flight program and that's what I'd always want, wanted to, to go into nice yeah so I, I remember hearing that about coach Parker that uh, you know when, when Hazel stepped down or was or was let go and uh, he took over for the rest of that season. I heard he was a real surge of energy. He was a real um, emotional uh, guy in a great sense. You know, he could really fire everybody up, kind of bring the rally the troops in a in a in a sense, and and um, was really able to help pull you guys together for the rest of that season. Is that is that true? Kind of the kind of the way he was. Really the truth, and and because he he's so authentic, he was such an authentic guy that he didn't have to pretend wasn't fake, and um, he he did do some unconventional type of things to try to get definitely brought us together and he kind of told us you know that we're a family and you know no matter what fight you know we can't just give up these games so i mean he definitely he turned in and everyone kind of loosened up because after coach hazel was fired it was kind of like a very great thing i guess the only way to go was up um but yeah for a little bit you yeah, and Coach Parker was that for us, for sure. Cool, awesome. Very cool. Yeah, it seems to be a recurring theme. Is uh, oftentimes it's uh, it's one particular person that leads the players coming. Um, that's that's always so cool to hear an individual's perspective on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so um, yeah, I mean, I, I you had a a lot of terrific moments in a Purdue uniform. I know uh, like some things that stick out. The final home game against IU is the one that I always remember. But what was your particular favorite moment in a Purdue uniform? Well, the one I always go back to was actually my freshman year day up there. It was a little bit wet and rainy, if I recall. They had a very good defense. That they're ten, and I went for like 146 yards and two touchdowns against them. That was kind of like I remember. I think DJ 
had been hurt <laughs> at some point early on in that season at the range from there. And then we kind of worked that one two, that one two threat in the backfield, thunder and lightning. So that moment. But then there were so many moments throughout the years too. A lot of them against Indiana. <laughs> and then just there's there's <laughs> numerous other It's ones never a too. bad thing though, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. I always remember that uh, the last game, uh, I think I, I stiff armed. It was uh, Marcelino Ball I armed him for like 10 or 15 yards. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's a, there's a backstory to that. that I, um, all week in practice, Coach Barclay, which I love, Coach Barclay to death, a father figure. If I didn't have a father, he'd be my father figure. Um, awesome. But I love this man to death. That whole week in practice, from the time that we stepped out of the weight room, on, he, he's just screaming, Marcelino Ball. Oh, I mean, he's just like so <laughs> emphatic. He was gonna get That's you. awesome. Like, like he was just all week meeting rooms. All I heard was Marcelino Just chirping. Ball, so it was so poetic that he was the one who caught that step for him. Mm. Yeah, that's awesome. I, oh, that's that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I remember being at that game. Um, and uh, it it was such a, a vindicating feeling going from, you know, um, some previous years. And I, I can't imagine from that from a player's perspective. So I'd love to hear that, too. But, um, you know, being a fan and, and going from just a, a few tough years to um, kind of just a shot in the arm and going six and six that year and, and getting bowl eligible by beating Indiana, you know, um, was amazing. <laughs> I remember I took a friend of that game who, who was an IU fan, but, you know, I still took him. Uh, we had uh, we were front row on the 50 yard line, so it was a it was a great game to be at and experience. You know, got to rush the field afterwards too. So really cool stuff. So yeah, um, yeah. well, I think you you said it, but what better way to clinch your season to get the bucket to do, do it at Indiana in front of there for lack of fans that they had that day. Probably was majority <laughs> Purdue, but um, to do it there was it just kind of was. It was a good culmination for that season, especially because we know how that season in uh, Nashville. But that's beside the point. Yeah. Because uh, mm. the game, the, the, you know what I mean? So that was that was awesome. That's that's my that's one of those moments that I'll also forget. I won't forget. I'm sorry. Awesome. No, that's so cool. And um, yeah, uh, I definitely I, I still get that, you know, that memory to pop up my phone every year uh, on the on the day of that game. Um, and I just remember, uh, I have a video on my phone of, you know, we're, uh, the players and the, the fans were all just in the middle of the field. We've got, you guys have the bucket lifted up in the air and everybody's chanting, IU sucks. And, um, you know, we were bull <laughs> yeah. I mean, there was just a lot of, there was so much, it was, I feel like it was even deeper than just winning, a, a you know, becoming bull eligible because it was just the, the grind that you all went through and, and put yourselves through for a few years. And, and really you guys worked your tails off to, you know, to get back up to where we all knew that, um, you know, you guys could be. And it was, man, so cool. Um, that was, yeah, such a special thing to be uh, to be a part of. And it was cool to be there, too. And I can't imagine, you know, from your side of how that felt. Um, but uh, so, you know, you played a lot of games at Ross 8, obviously. Um, but what would you say, where would you say is like your <coughs> number one toughest place to play that you've ever played at, at the collegiate level? Um. um I think it would probably be, I don't know, but it's kind of a toss up between Wisconsin. Wisconsin's tough, but they're kind of quiet sometimes. They're playing late. But if the fans are actually there, like the student section in particular, I remember backed up coming out, like maybe five or six yard line coming out, and my butt, and we're coming out. And I know it's going to be a run play, it's going to be like, like a inside zone to the left. And it, the crowd noise was just unbelievably tough to deal with that day um so that's a really tough um i'd almost say minnesota's difficult to play up there only because it seems like every time we play wow. and that kind of uh, for some reason i don't know kind of just kills us that's it kind of, and it kind of makes it tough for us to throw the ball occasionally whenever it's super cold up there uh, um iowa their crowd the is does awesome. the time change really affect like if you play a noon game that's like 11 your body time does that actually like mess with you at all or is just being an hour really not that much of a difference well i don't think it's the hour it's, it's uh it, it, it is it is possible 
Honestly, some of the we just don't like new games. Yeah, no one, okay. no one likes a new game. <laughs> it's just tough to that get going one that quick. I have. Of a uh, seven p.m. game, except for if it's under lights on at, at Ross said, then you love it. The best time twelve o'clock is just too early. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Quite frankly. I mean, yeah, you gotta get up and move at like seven or eight, and you're just kind of. Yeah, yeah, going through the grind and stuff. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. you kind of hop on. I was really surprised to not hear Nebraska. I'm sorry. Just, uh, I was really surprised to not hear you say Nebraska in that list, just because that's uh, something they seem to pride themselves in is an intimidating atmosphere. <laughs> uh, so well, intimidating, but they're so friendly. The, the crowd. Is they like, are really. They got to be the friendliest they're fans super of the big really Ten. friendly. <laughs> like even my family, wow. like, like my family, they would tell me after the games like yeah no, even like we would like and they were like yeah everyone was like good game like pat us on the back like good job I'm like <laughs> love that you don't, don't do so, well yeah. that's because they thought we was wow. an easy opponent it was a winnable game so yeah, they yeah. <laughs> they didn't <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah so uh that's a that's a really great segue uh russ so you know, that was kind of my next question was just, I, I just need to know, man, how, how bummed are you to hear that Scott Frost's not at Nebraska anymore? I mean, you've got to be just torn up about that. <laughs> I actually am torn up. I am torn up. Oh, okay. Because eventually that video is going to fade away because it's not going to be necessary <laughs> anymore. No, you know, no. Unless no, he's no, playing so. some offensive coordinator job or something somewhere far along the way, you know what I mean? But, yeah. So um, I think we, we I heard think we, from somebody. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I there was ahead, a cutout. And I, no, no, no. You're good. Just go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off there. <laughs> I forget where I was going. You, you got it. Take it over. <laughs> um, I'm so sorry. Um, but no, I was saying that, you know, I don't I don't know that it'll, it will die because uh, we were there's a guy that um, he's a Purdue fan, but he lives in Lincoln. And he's saying that like every year when that game comes around, they yeah. play that on the local on local TV stuff, they play that clip like all the over and over. <laughs> Do they really? It's a winnable game. That's Dude, funny. That was, Did you oh know that? God. That's funny. You know what? The, the, the truth of the matter is, Braun wasn't standing right there. I'd have made it more direct, too. <laughs> like, <laughs> I didn't like having to win. We had a winnable game. I would have got, if Coach Braun hadn't been in my way, I'd have walked right up to his face and I'd have, you know, <laughs> place and awesome. time. You know? Oh. Yeah. So, <laughs> now, would you say that was was that something you all used as motivation throughout the week after you made those comments? Um, we felt very disrespected because I mean, it's Nebraska. You, you know, at this point, they weren't really doing well. Um, I think we had their numbers. We had a really good game plan dialed up for those guys, and so it was just disrespect. Point. You are on the same level as us, so so for you to call us a winnable game, like. We're like you know, Mac school, school or some, like that's just yeah. disrespect. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. like you we, just lit a like, fire under another Big Ten team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we exactly. See how that works out. And then you got to go see him. Like, if, if if you feel really confident about your team, I don't. I mean, it was fake confidence, obviously. Yeah. Um, and so uh, another, you know, uh, a Purdue tradition. Um, at Ross Aid, oh, um, every third quarter we play the song, the song of our people, at the end of the the third <laughs> quarter. And uh, um, so I want to know from a player's perspective, what do you think of Shout? And then if Shout, if if you're not a fan, you know what song would you replace it with? Man, I don't know. I think a lot of people on Twitter that they're ready to get rid of Shout and you know to move away yeah. from that. I'm kind of been like to know how long that tradition has been around. Um, my freshman and sophomore year, I thought it was a pretty cool thing. You know, it's different. Some Every school's got their thing that they do. i a little worn out, though. You know, I think we could definitely mm-hmm. move to something different to the third quarter. Um, I'll definitely I say that shout during Penn State was another level. I've never seen yeah. shout that good. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Well, that's the thing, you know. If if the, and it looks really good, and it, and it works out pretty well, um, but I don't know. I don't know this, and I don't know what I, I would replace it with, though. I uh, I uh, I don't know if you saw or not. Um, I can't remember what game it was. Um, I think it was after Penn State. But there's a clip of Sanusi Kane. He's a linebacker um, on the team, and he uh, 
I think he's linebacker, and um, he was singing. Um, uh, yeah, but I say safety. Oh, safety. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, like but, <laughs> um, but anyway, he was singing uh, that Phil Collins song. Um, uh, what's it called? Coming into the air tonight. What's it called? Yeah. In, the in the air tonight. tonight. In the air. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. He was singing that. Okay. And I was like, man, that would actually be kind of a cool song to hear, like the whole crowd singing, you know, the. Yeah, that and would be kind of cool. And then that with uh, I... how the basketball team has the little light show. Oh, yeah. He makes that with the little. Light. Especially with LED lights nowadays, you can turn those off and turn them right back on, no problem. You, you know, you know, light profile on the people's phones, they stick their yeah. phones up. I'm like, hey, good idea. You might be onto something. That's a legit idea. Yeah. That That'd is cool. actually a legit idea. I like that a lot. Yeah. That's a good song. Yeah. Kind of I just switch, switch it up, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, cool. So, um... so, kind of something I've always been interested in. And so what was it like kind of going from that shift into the Brom era, like playing under two different coaching systems and coaching styles and kind of like, like how hard is it to, I don't want to say keep a locker room, but for lack of a better way to put it, like guys who played under Hazel to, to buy into Brom system and, and stuff like that. Well, that's, that's, that's always what it's about, about whenever you're always looking for the buy-in. And so you can tell, so I can tell you the, the coach, and see throughout interviews and just in his day to day, whenever he first got to Purdue, he was he was looking to lead out. He was trying to find the guys who weren't gonna fall in line and and be the new system. So he was kind of a little bit of a, a, a hard ass and initially, but I mean, he was able to get some of the guys that quite, quite frankly um, didn't want to didn't have like, like the passion and the drive anymore. Yeah. And, and just wouldn't want want to follow them. So, yeah, he came in. Yeah. And he came in very tough. Um, but once he kind of figured out who his guys were, he, um, to can to take care of the locker. Room. <laughs> and now at this point, if you go ask anybody, like coach room, like we've got leaders in that locker room that kind of control that. They keep it clean, clean necessary. They they keep the foolishness down. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Um, and he's given the team because. You don't want a coach that's like a micromanager, so he's given the t- the reign that team. Yeah, and, and he like delegates stuff to the different like captains and seniors and stuff to be like, "Hey, deal with this, so I don't absolutely. have to." Absolutely, absolutely, okay. exactly. Because if it has to get to him, um, then right, you know, yeah, the, you know and I mean? that's and that's honestly like the good like design of any real organization is that delegation, yeah. so the guy at the top doesn't have to do everything. Yep, exactly. Because he's got to, be, you know, this foolish crap that, you know, whatever college kids do, you know what I mean? He'd rather be in and preparing for weekend and week out. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Um, so I, we kind of touched on this a little bit, but uh, kind of talking about preference for uh, game times. Obviously, it sounds like noon is out of the question. Um, so between <laughs> afternoon yeah. or night games, does it kind of depend on if you're on the road or at home or? Um, I think everybody likes a night game. Uh, uh, it's just back like that Friday night lights type. Yeah. Deal, yeah. And it's just special. It's really special. Um, kind of a negative thing. Like you're amped up all day. I remember some of those long hotels. So it's like Holiday Inn there in, in Lafayette. And you're there all, all day. Just long, juiced long. up. You wait some breakfast. You got, got some walkthroughs. You know, you go back to the room. Maybe film, um, sleep, sleep, yeah, go eat lunch, dinner, yeah, long day. So, what's uh, so like for a night game, kind of like what's your meals like? I'm sure you're probably not trying to get real carb heavy or anything like that, but just enough to keep your stomach full, but not like so you're not, you know, puking on the sidelines or whatever. Yeah, yeah, for me, you know, it, it kind of <laughs> depends. Some of the some of the big guys I don't really care, like they're gonna, right? Yeah, yeah, throw, makes sense. they're gonna. They're gonna throw up if they want to throw up, and that's just <laughs> gonna be what it. For me, I, I typically would. I know that I got a long, long day ahead of me, so if I eat a decent breakfast, whatever I want for breakfast, and I'm just keep trying to keep fluids down. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just, just like a super anxious, anxious. Like I wasn't like nervous, scared. I was just yeah. always anxious. So You're just like ready to go. It was hard. Yeah. 
ready to go. Hard for me to drink, but I always have to force uh, Gatorade and Gator lights and um, electrolytes. Force those to stay hydrated throughout the day and then make it to the nice. game. Makes sense. Except it's a really good job. They have all the, you know, all, all the technology. And yeah, they've the got everything planned and out and be like, hey, you need to drink this by this time, this by that time, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Yeah. They got everything ready to go. And then we, yeah. we take like pickle juice, take to try to not cramp. Yeah. 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 Kind of give it to you. There's some other stuff I can't That's remember awesome. the, what the name of the Lauren Link, our, our nutritionist, our dietitian. She always would come around with this. I like that she would give some of the starters and the guys are going to be playing early just so they can yeah. be ready. That's awesome. So uh, kind of diverting away from from football now, kind of tell us what life's been like after Purdue. Like, what are you up to now? Like, endeavors, yeah. stuff like that. Uh, and I became a flight instructor. So I went back home to Columbus, Indiana, and I was instructing at, in Columbus. And then through my dad, who's a pilot, I met a guy, money, has an airplane. I went and flew for that guy for, for about a year. And then once I got all my time, I'm now a first officer for Piedmont Airlines, which is a wholly owned regional airline of America right now. Oh, um, very cool. Based, yeah, based in Philly. So I'm, I'm in Montreal right now. I go back, do a quick turn, turn up to Rochester, New York, and I go back home tomorrow very cool. evening. That's awesome. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. What, uh, what do you fly? I'm a plane nerd, so I have to know. <laughs> it's five. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 50-seater. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So the plane, this, it's all stepping stuff. Like, you know, you start as a GA, then you might be an uh, offensive you might get a position coach, and then you might be an offensive coordinator. So this is stepping stone. So I went from first officer. I'll be upgrading to captain. I'm thinking in March of next year. Next year I'll upgrade nice. to captain. I'll fly as a captain for about a year, year or two with my company. I need to go either to mainline American Airlines or UPS with my dad. Okay. Or FedEx. FedEx is right there in Indianapolis, so that would that would keep me at home. Yeah. UPS is down here in Louisville by Frank and I, so you know you can come down here too. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That applies for UPS, so he's based in Louisville. Okay. You uh, you say the city like you've been there before, so well done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just hoping the. We keep a guy from going down to Louisville. I don't. I don't know if Brom is still got yeah. day heading, yeah. heading back home or not. But I hope not. Not for a while. Yeah, I don't know. I uh, I've got I I go back and forth on that a lot myself because um, somebody I can't remember what podcast I was listening to, but they made a really good point that um, Brom and his family love Louisville like we all love Purdue. Um, mm-hmm. and so just putting that in our, putting that, uh, being, uh, in, in our own shoes. And if somebody, you know, told me, Hey man, we, we'd love to offer you a, a coaching job at, at Purdue university. I, I wouldn't even think twice about it. I'd be gone. Tell my wife and kids, you know, Hey, just find us a house later. I'll, I'll, I gotta go, I gotta go, uh, I gotta go North. No, doubt. um, no, but, yeah. uh, but yeah, so I, I, I hope that just with where the program's at now and with where Louisville's at right now, hopefully he's just, you know, sees Purdue still as like a not finished project yet and wants to stay here for a while. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I went to, yeah. I think that he, he's got a, he's got a, he's got a very strong mentality. I think he's set a goal on what he's accomplished so far at Purdue. And I hope he sees it through. I think he will. Yeah. That said, and I think that Brom did a good job, has done a good job, you know, since Tiller showing that you can win at Purdue. Like, you can get good talent. You can get, like, be that, like, national name and, and have big plays and big games and big players. And and I think, God forbid, we do lose Brom to Louisville. I think that the Purdue job has become more attractive to some higher-end coaches compared to what it was 15 years ago. I totally yeah, agree and, uh, the, with that. Yeah, and the money and the the, the yeah. facilities are there now. Uh, they kind of match. has been a lifesaver for this program. Yeah. Yeah. You said so. You said Brom had a plan and had goals in place. What was um, 
what was the Hazel plan, or did 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 he just have a completely <laughs> different attitude? I'm, I'm just gonna go there. Since we've talked about some of this stuff, I'm just gonna go there. <laughs> what was that? Hazel plan. If Hazel would have been more outspoken, I could probably tell you what the plan was. Oh but, wow, that's not his forte, you know. He, he's, yeah, he's a quiet kind of guy. He's sort of reserved alligator, and um, um, I mean, he, he, you know, one thing about, about Hazel, man, and love the guy. He really is like to sit down and have a conversation with. I love, love the man, but um, he, he just, he just, not, and it kind of like just resonated throughout the whole whole sideline like mm. we'd be down in a game stoic like straight, straight face no emotion and it's just, just like man he you can kind of he's lost and we lost like right behind him you know what i mean so he he right. reminded me of a if lot like he tried to emulate the, a lot, lot of jim trussell was, you let me know <laughs> yeah. we'll do yeah we'll let you <laughs> we'll do some digging <laughs> But I, He's I think a lot of like, that probably had to do with his military background, I would think. I mean, he, uh, I know he had yeah. he, uh, spent some time at um, some military academy, but he, he just had a very militaristic style of the way that yeah. he spoke and the way that he conducted himself. I know they down had to the hat, hat too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I've never yeah. seen anybody wear a hat like that. Yeah. 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 But he reminded bad. me a You're lot right. of like an attempt to try and be like uh, very like Jim Trussell like. Yeah, he, he came from that. Gym. Makes sense that he came from that tree, but it seemed yeah. like very like well, I don't want to say carbon copy, but it was pretty close. Oh, it was. Uh, uh, I remember we had so every three teams got like the, they go throughout their fall camp and their uh, summer ball and their spring ball. We had we had an A player's manual. It was about this thick, had all kinds of motivation. With the A player's manual, is what's that? No. No. Okay. Yeah. Well, so I actually work. I actually wrote for another website, and we got to see like a chunk of that manual when we did an interview, like yeah. when he first came in, and I was like, "Yeah, good lord." Yeah. Yeah. So Jim Trussell is. I think he's the players' manual. Different motivational stuff, and it's almost like his version of the like every day in camp. We'd have like a different passage to read, like mm. and um, theory. Wow. It just didn't for us i don't think a lot of people misplace their manuals and it will resonate yeah it's oh. kind of weird how that works <laughs> <Damn this thing. laughs> oh man so speaking of coaches and and guys you got relationships with still post purdue um what's your current thoughts on what coach barclay is working with and what the uh, running back room looks like now and what maybe they need to improve on but what things you're impressed by especially this year with how much better we've seen be running the ball this year starts with uh, Coach Brown wanting to take that initiative to try to run the ball more right in our offensive attack. But Coach Coach Barkley has, has done a really good job with what he's been given. Back healthy. I'm not sure what his what the holdup is, but King's a good, good player. If we can get King back healthy, better, it's going to take a little bit of time to mesh, especially with the uh, – I think Cam Craig is going to be out there losing guys left and right. Like – Star players, um, yeah, but it definitely has been uh, the running game, and even Mock could be uh, walk on that came out of nowhere from up north. Yeah, pretty, pretty good ball. Um, yeah. I watched him. I went through their final <laughs> spring uh, uh, practice. It was a scrimmage, and Mock broke off, off numerous runs. And Barclay, I called DJ, um, and they were on the. He put me on speakerphone. On there in the meeting room, and I kind of gave some, like you know, treat tomorrow like it's a real game type type deal. And then later on, Michael is going to be the real deal. I said I don't care that he's a walk on. The kid can play. The kid had a, you know, we were lucky to get him as a walk on because he was had an army scholarship. Mm-hmm. Lucky to get, mm-hmm. get the kid, and uh, he's he can ball, and he's young. I mean, you, you see how skinny he is. He's a frail so off tackles and stiff farming so yeah it, that kid packed good. on some size holy crap he's gonna be that good quickness and he's got good vision vision makes a running back hands down um you can have the most running back and i think he's got pretty good vision he sees it pretty well yeah 
And just to have a guy, too, that is that good and is, has that much potential, but also just loves Purdue. You know, he yeah. talked about, you know, he had that scholarship to, to go play football somewhere else, but then he got a walk-on offer from Purdue, and it wasn't even a second thought. That was, you know, his dream school. Yeah. Um, so you got to love having somebody like that that uh, not only has the talent and, and has the potential to be great, but also just loves the loves the school. And, you know, that's going to look great for our future. You know, uh, if he ke- continues to progress the way he is, it's going to look great for our future, you know, um, prospects with, uh, you know, running backs, um, you know, recruiting running backs, um, you know, come in the in the coming future as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we got. We got we to really recruit and we got to get like a, a pipeline of big dudes. Don't want to be hard nosed and run the ball. Running backs going, <clears throat> so success in the run game this year would go a long way. Transitions have an increase in talent. Yeah, I think um, Frank brought up a stat. Um, I don't know if it was last episode or two episodes ago, but um, you know, uh, all of 2021 we had seven uh, uh, running touchdowns. Um, but this year we're already at seven. I think we're at even more now with the FAU game. So, um, you know, really? we're definitely heading in that direction where we're we're running more and we're we're pushing balancing the ball up. out a little bit. Yeah, so yeah. it's good to see. That's great. What well, was it like? There was a game last season. It might have even been Penn State. Like O'Connell f- threw for like fifty four times or something like that. I was like, God, that's gonna ruin a quarterback. <laughs> like, doing that week in and week out, that's just gonna break him down. Me too. And I think you kind of put your quarterback back in danger. And this is nothing that Brown doesn't know. It kind of put your quarterback in danger. Defensive player, and I'm and I'm a coordinator. And you, and I know this guy has tendency to throw the ball thirty plus blitzes, and then you get your quarterback hurt. Yeah. So you got to run just for the safety of just to, yeah to throw the guys off. Keep people honest. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I got a question for you guys. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Question for you guys. What are you guys' thoughts about uh, renovations? How those how those are going to look? What do you guys think of oh, going down to the south, south I end love zone? And you like love that idea? I think it. I think it's going to be good. I feel like if you look at any major like powerhouse stadium, so Wisconsin, Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, all of their students are always in one end zone or the other or both of them. I mean, hell, even Mackey Arena's got their students in behind each basket. I think it just kind of, it, especially having them on that south end zone and all that noise can flow towards the bowl, and then it just starts swirling. I think it's good. I think it's going to be awesome. So I'm pumped about I, the tunnel. The tunnel is going to be sick. Yeah, yeah that tunnel's going to be awesome. Yeah. 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 That, that'll be a huge for As small as it may seem, like that is going to be like a very, very big recruiting point. Next year, right. we have ESPN in the tunnel or whoever's walking out. Oh, yeah. And there's gonna, I'm sure there's going to be lights to mute it, and kids are going to yeah. be like, I want to be a part of that. Especially if there's something to slap, because that always seems like a big thing. <laughs> you get a rock or a piece of Could wood. Could you imagine, like, smack uh, a Purdue shit. Pete, like a map to have a yeah. hammer? That'd be yeah. sick. Oh, man, that'd just be smack. so cool. Smack. I love so, that idea. We're really writing some Purdue traditions on this show. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> I have a dream and a vision for statue at the end of the tunnel as you walk. walk our new tradition. Yeah, be sick. Love yeah. that. I uh, yeah. I have a vision for 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 that tunnel. I love the tunnel as well. It's my favorite part of this, and like I, I just have this vision, man, of just like the players. They're they're bumping into each other. They're they're getting all amped up and stuff. You know, you got Coach Brom doing one of his speeches. He's throwing chairs again. Um, and then you just hear like, I just want them to play, um, Thunderstruck, but whenever the, you know, in the song where it's like, uh, 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 I want them to, I want the crowd to be like, and then, or no, uh, whenever the, whenever the song's like, done, done. And it says thunder. I want people to, I want the crowd to go boilers, uh, uh, uh." 65,000 plus people all yelling that that would be insane. He's, this isn't the first time he's thought about this. No, no. Yeah. This is not off the whim. Yeah, we got to get you in front of the A so you can get these ideas Just uh, give me the connections, Markel. I'll do it. I'll get yeah. me in front of the people I need to talk to. I might just go do it and take it as my own idea. Cause that's, that fine. Was- that's fine. That's yeah. fine. That's fine. That's fine. As long as it happens, that's all we really care about. We just get like a field pass out of it. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs>
Or you just imagine like Brom on top of the Boilermaker special with like a Purdue flag. They're just riding it, riding out of the tunnel. <laughs> they got steam coming out of it. He's holding the flag. The players are running behind him. <laughs> oh man, it's goofy. This is off the road. I agree with you though. I do. I do like this out of the end zone thing. I think the students in there. I think you guys pretty much every other team. I just thought it was kind of, kind of odd that it seemed like a lot, there was like a backlash about them moving the students to the South Denzel for whatever reason. Yeah, I and honestly, like, I think it was the same amount of backlash that there was when they moved all those stands out of there in the first place. Like, mm-hmm. like some people complained about it, and then they realized that they were going to get better seats, and they're like, oh, okay, it's whatever. Because <laughs> I'll be honest, I've sat yeah. in those seats before, and while they're cheap and decent – it's really hard to tell what the hell's going on half the time because I'm like depth perception really sucks. I'm like, that was either a one yard carry or a 14 yard carry. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. I think I knew touchdowns. Um, that was about it. I think one thing that people were talking about, at least that I saw was, um, I guess maybe it was a year ago or some, some time ago before they came out with this rendition of their plans. Um, they had some, there was rumblings or, or there was even pictures being drawn up of like, and um, like over the top renovation, like it actually being a bowl and this whole a thing. Pipe dream. Um, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and that could still very well, you know, be in our future. And this is phase one, two of the renovations. Yeah. And I think a lot of people forget that this is just phase one, which means there's going to be a phase two. Um, and so, you know, I think I, I love it. I think it's going to be awesome. I can't wait. Um, you know, my grandpa, he's the one that got me into Purdue football and um, he's had season tickets since 85. Um, he had to, he stopped getting them a few years ago just with him, his his age. And it's about a three hour drive from where we live. Um, but, you know, with those renovations he was talking about, I, I called him on the phone. Um, you know, we talk about once a week and about Purdue and stuff and um, he was saying he wants to go back up for a game now whenever they, they finish all that up next year because it just looks so cool. And, um, you know, that's yeah. what it's all about at the end of it. It's just getting people in stands, building those memories. Yeah. Um, you know, that's who cares what it all looks like in the end. Um, you know, as and long what, as I think it bumps the crowd into 65,000 now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which will be awesome. That'd be yeah. great. No. I think there's going to need to be another jumbo trying to the other side of the field. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's the next gonna be like we can one of the grand I thought in one of the grand schemes there's supposed to be like a, a smaller one, almost kind of like the size of the old one before the one we have now that's okay. supposed to go on the north side. Okay, mm-hmm. good. And that's my yeah, biggest issue cool. with sitting in the south end zone as is, or even before they made it smaller, was that there's no there's no screen to watch. So I'm yeah. I like to watch the screen like the Especially like pre-snap coverages, like it's hard to hard to see that when you're sitting there. So to be able to turn around and have to look is always a pain. Yeah, and like replays and stuff. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um. So, um, what? You know, we've talked a lot about your experiences as a player. You know what you're doing now after Purdue football and everything. Um, but. I think one thing that's a really cool perspective that I would love to hear about is just your experience going from being a, a player on the side of things to now a fan and, and being on this end and, you know, um, seeing it kind of from our, our perspective and being a part of that. Now, what's that transition been like for you? It's harder on this side. I don't <laughs> really? like this side. Yeah, <laughs> man, it's tough. Cause it's like, like, but look at some of the stuff and be, be like, Oh, I would have done this. Or I, we could have ours I, I, that I played with, like, and I love everybody on this team. You know what I mean, but you, you just can't help but think like fancy. You can't help but think like some of these other cats that I've played with, or DJ. You know, or DJ, Mark, Marcus Bailey. What Bryce mm-hmm. and Hopkins would have done. You know what I mean? So it's just, yeah. Almost like we're so close in so many games, and it also kind of is like they we lose like on these last like Penn State was heartbreaking uh Syracuse was tough seeing that just kind of like man it kind of just brings back up like a little bit of a PTSD moment where it's like <laughs> the team looks so good for so many parts of the game and then you have like, like penalties that kill the and ultimately make you lose the game but yeah I, I do love it though I do enjoy it I'm just a freaking football I'm bad I, I'll have <laughs> Two TVs going. I have both iPads going. And I'll be watching scores on my phone, watching IU games, just to make sure they lose. 
I love that. I love that. <laughs> my man. Similar to how I spend my Saturdays, honestly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> as long as Notre Dame yeah, and I use this, that's. Yeah. yeah. I told my girlfriend, like, Sundays, I, I, I like football. I like NFL football, but like, football from like 12 to 10, like, that's what I'm doing. And I'll do whatever. The Saturday is like, like I got to watch football all day. Yeah. It's oh, yeah. Day. Yeah. Yes. It, college football is just, I mean, I love the NFL, but college football is just a different breed, man. Different. It's like, it's intense. People are so loyal to their teams and their schools. Yeah. Um, it's it's awesome. <clears throat> Linda, to touch on what you said about, you know, feeling like you could have done something different or one of your teammates could have done something different. I don't know if anyone else experiences this, but every time we lose a game, I somehow feel like if I was there in person, I would have made a difference. I would have yelled a little bit louder. I would have created a little bit more crowd noise. So I can relate to that personally. Has anyone else experienced that? Or is it just... yeah. 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 Like no, my attendance too. with the bad luck. Yeah. yeah. Or I'll yeah. feel yeah. like if I don't, exactly. or I, I feel like a couple different things. If I don't watch the game, you know, I was the reason that they didn't pull it yeah. out. Um, and if somebody walks in while I'm watching the game and throws out and starts talking to me, like my dad, God love my dad. Dad, if you're watching this, I really do love you. But my dad is notorious because he's an IU guy, unfortunately. Um, and he is notorious for he'll call me like he called me the last he'll call me like the two minute mark of each at the end of the if the game is like down to the wire. Like he called me. He, he'll FaceTime me like the, the end of the Penn State game. He'll or, or he'll, he FaceTime me with like a minute left in the Syracuse game because he just wants to be like, what's going on, man? What are they doing? Or like I have a friend who um, he'll send me a screenshot of like his fan duel, like parlay for saturday and he always picks against <laughs> purdue and he's just like i'm sorry damon i had to i had to do it <laughs> so um you know just goofy stuff like that man um, Mark, yeah i find myself out, we sit on the uh press box side whenever i get my tickets pretty down low and i, I find myself i remember as a player the crowd up because that side can get a little bit quiet at times and so i'm, I'm like in the stands at the and they're kind of doom and gloom, and I find myself like, like, what are you doing? Get, get up, let's go. So. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, you you grew up in IU country, right? Yeah. Uh, so did yeah. were you yeah. a Purdue fan growing up, or an IU fan, or another team? Uh, um. Well, my my team team is Auburn. Like I love Auburn. Uh, had they offered, I, I'd have gone to Auburn. I think they have a flight program as well. But I actually, was an IU basketball basketball fan of sorts i hadn't even initially because i'm not i'm not from indiana originally i'm from missouri okay so i moved to indiana so living in southern cool. indiana again everything every store you go to is going to be iu remember the t-shirts jerseys etc and then you got to get like north of indianapolis to start seeing and so i i was, was you know a product of my environment at the time but uh um, this is I was recruited by IU, and it was Coach Wilson, Kevin Wilson, and I go like a, an unofficial visit. I think it was an unofficial visit, and we're sitting in you know Memorial at the stadium, and like, but some uh, suite that overlooks the field. Uh, I'm sitting there with my mom, and Kevin Wilson walks over to me. He says, "Snakes out to shake my hand," and calls me like Trayvon. On her hey so and so like didn't oh, whoa. and I, Yikes. literally I shook his hand and I can't remember if I right because he walked, walked away I looked at my mom and I was like like we're out of here That's, you know, we, we left <laughs> oh right? no and then so yeah that was the end of Ooh. any ambition of going to IU because it was yeah first of all, I'm just quite frankly the best player in the state of Indiana you you should not know my name and if you don't then we have nothing else to discuss should know your name your mom's name your, your yeah, right. dog's Everybody. name like yeah, yeah. they yeah. don't give the mr football word out to scrubs yeah, <laughs> yeah like wow oh, wow that, that's unreal. that is a mind-boggling story like yeah, how the yeah you were talking about happen? just growing up in that culture and being in the middle of the iu purdue rivalry and i living in the louisville area for a few years i took a couple of buddies up to the Purdue Louisville basketball game when it was came back to Mackey, 
Um, and I just told him, I said, look, look y'all, y'all always think Louisville and Kentucky is a big rivalry. A lot of people down south think that IU Kentucky is a bigger rivalry than IU Purdue. And we went to that game, and that was when we still did the IU sucks chant during basketball games. And they're like, we're not even, yeah. we're not even playing IU. I was like, you don't understand. You don't understand. And then they brought out in the second half the bucket because it was shortly after the bucket game. And everybody's chanting IU sucks. And they're like, what are you, you're playing Louisville. What is talk? What are you talking about? I'm like, you don't understand. It's a, it's a different thing. It's a different monster. Like Purdue fans yeah. watch IU games to watch them lose, like to root for exactly. them to lose. Like that's, that's how this rivalry works. Yeah. So, yeah, 100%. I'm a straight hater. It's just built different. <laughs> I love yeah. that. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so, so as a, as a fan and, and getting involved in all the games this year and watching everything, what, what do you, what do you think Minnesota holds for us? What do you think your predictions are for Minnesota and how we game plan and try to control the game and what do you think Yaka might be? I can. I think it's going to be a grinded out sort of game. I'm, I'm for, I don't know what the weather's going to look like, but that's going to be a good <laughs> That's a good, um, that's a good question. Yeah. I'll get your weather. They, got, they got Mo. Mo Ibrahim, yeah. Is it going to be dry? Dry, dry game. Uh, Frank, what did you say what the weather was? Uh, so yeah, 62 overcast. I don't think it calls for any rain. Last time I checked. Mo Ibrahim, Ibrahim, that dude is like a legitimate. He's going to be – kid can play. Uh, uh, so we're going to slow him down, find a way to put a lot of people in the box. I think that once you get to the ball, make a play, a gang tackle, nothing that's like groundbreaking. Like that kid. Did. I watched a lot of his games, and the first guy very rarely tackles him. He's got he's lower body. Um, he's kind of like a bowling ball. He's sort of like a DJ type body. Fast, mm -hmm. and so if he gets in the open field, things get scary. So he's got to contain on scrimmage. Um, I think they have they have a decent passing threat, but, but I think their running game is really where big bodies up front, and I think. Uh, um, Offensively, we, we kind of let them all have it. And I heard somebody was saying earlier in the week talking about how Brom really put his A game, his, his best foot forward in games like this. So they're, they're you know, a team that we haven't beat in a very long time. Um, and we're coming off a uh, live win. I think he's going to have a really, really good game plan. I'm sure you're going to see a couple of trick plays and put on film yet um i think he'll do everything he can to to get this win i think it's pretty yeah awesome i think that's an aspect that i've been surprised we haven't ran i think we've what ran one or two gadget plays in four games yeah i was i've always kind of hiding keeping in the back of my head wondering if like we were just kind of pocketing that stuff for big 10 play you know i often wonder if Brom. like yeah i think we I just wonder if he has this pressure to just constantly come up with trick plays. You know, like there's only, I mean, there's only so many things you can do, right? He just keeps them up at yeah. night. I've often wondered that. <clears throat> yeah. No, but I, we got guys like the GA is will sit there and watch, watch film. Like they'll watch NFL games. Kansas City probably looks at their stuff, some of their, uh, their end around stuff and they're being like in that wing position and kind of getting like a pitch pass. So, I would look for those. That's sometimes where we get down the red zone. We kind of, kind of struggle to score down there sometimes. We're like an over the top, throw the, you know, Charlie go for six. Um, I think he's going to have some red zone stuff that's going to get us to score a touchdown. So we need touchdowns. Field goals are good, but we need touchdowns this game. And so I think he's going to have yeah. something for days. Because at this point, flea flickers is kind of like, you know, you, you can throw a couple of minute games successful. You know, you yeah. got to yeah, we know some from, people haven't seen. Yeah, we know from Brom's experience, he'll pull stuff from YouTube. So yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. admitted seeing high school plays on YouTube and, and throwing them in there. Yeah. Any, <laughs> and that's where I think – the basketball being played, he'll find it. where I think Brom's like – like he uses the defense's aggressiveness against him in those trick plays sometimes, you know, because you see – like Michigan State play the Jackson Anthrop triple – flea flicker screenplay or whatever the hell you Bogey. want to call it. Yeah. Like, and you could see like just those defensive linemen were just all over the place, chasing the ball all over. And like, yeah. like if you just get some of those guys out of position, you start creating those seams and getting guys in right spots and blocks and stuff. And 
especially like, I mean, Minnesota is just going to be so high strung and they're going to be so, their ego is going to be so big. They're going to be so over aggressive. I think I just really think they're going to be, they're going to be real hyped. Yeah. I think I saw something yeah. where, um, yeah, I don't know if it's a Minnesota fan page or what, but they all picked Minnesota to win and, and to win handily too. Like it was like 34, 17, 41 to 10, um, you know, all these score lines. So hopefully Braun printed that out and, you know, I was using that as, um, uh, you know, some motivation for the week, but, uh, but yeah, sorry, uh, Mark Hill, what were you going to say? I'll, I'll respond to that. He's not big into that. Brom, like, like okay, he doesn't really? look at that. He's not going to mention that at all. If, if the players see it, then good on them, but that's not everybody any outside about anything. He's just like, really? This that's actually kind of surprising to me. I'll pull that up. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. That's something that, like, that's something that, Coach Hazel might do that, but okay. like, but okay. that's actually pretty Barclay cool that he calls guys names in practice. <laughs> <laughs> but that's actually pretty cool that he like has an internal drive and an internal motivator and doesn't use the the external stuff to get the job done, which I think is actually pretty commendable and pretty decent. Yeah, it's kind of like you gotta. Drive. You should. Uh, yeah. Um, he's he's a, he's a, he still stays in shape. He's an athlete. Like the dude was. Just, is always competing against himself, um, which I think makes him a good competitor. You know, yeah. he's like wanting to be flex like that bad that he's yeah. going to whatever's necessary and dig deep. Yeah. And that bleeds across the locker room. Mm hmm Yeah. I'm kind of looking at Minnesota's stats. I mean, the big thing that sticks out is this, their lack of, uh, you know, a pass rush this year. Um, you know, they have had five sacks, but only five QB hurries uh, to go with that. So, um, you know, if, if uh, Aiden does play, if his rumors are true and he has time to sit back there, I think he can pick apart this defense. Um, yeah. I'm really curious to see how things play out. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I, I, I think we have a much higher chance than what a lot of even Purdue fans are giving us. Yeah. I still yeah. look at their combined opponent's record at 3-14 and 14 and – I still think, well, I think they're the real deal. You know, Ibrahim's the real deal. I think what Tanner, whatever his last name is, I can't Morgan. think of. Morgan. Yes, thank yeah. you. I keep thinking Madison. I know that's not right. but He's been around uh, for 10 years. You should know I know. Him. You'd think I'd know it by now. <laughs> he's, like, he's like Aaron Kraft of football. Um, but, yeah, so, like, I think that those guys are, like, the real deal. But at the end of the day, you know, their stats look really lofty. But, I mean, and again, yes, they're college teams, but – the, the Eastern Michigan versus the Ohio State is a pretty damn wide spectrum. Yep. Yeah, before, yeah. before we got on, I actually had to go back and look because I wasn't even sure who they played in their season. And I looked at – you probably, you just said it. What, what's their – 3 and 14 is their – 3 and 14. Teams? Yeah. Now, they beat yeah. those teams handily. They, they did what they were yeah. supposed, supposed to do. And that's what you're supposed to do. Whenever you got it in this world where you'll see teams – <laughs> that they play with these teams, but they shouldn't. They don't have business having the game be close. Mm -hmm. uh, but Minnesota has taken care of business to their credit. You know the fact that we're mm -hmm. playing West. Right. Like, they haven't let that get to them. They, they went out there and they've handled a very focused team. I think they see themselves as the best team in the West, and I think they've already got themselves docked as seems to be playing in Ohio State, for example. Yeah. yeah. So I hope we can. Use Use that against them because I yeah. think the Fleck, Fleck recruited me at Western Michigan. Um, he's a flashy dude. I remember whenever I went to K Sure, Burberry Belt, you know, like <laughs> he's just nice watches and like he's a very, very flashy dude. Got to when he started at Purdue. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so I just know he's cocky, man. And I think he's going to be, be, but at the same time, and he's going to have those guys in the right mindset but i just think mm -hmm. that again the same way reality and his personality goes throughout the locker room you can't help but it's going to resonate that locker room no matter what he's yeah. saying it's going to go yeah. through that locker room so hopefully that, that yeah. i think it's going to be way more of a battle i if it's more than a touchdown either way i'd be surprised yeah yeah i, I think agree. I think this is going to be in the trenches as well. Um, and something that um, has me hopeful is that Tanner Morgan is not a running quarterback. He's not going to run too many options. Um, 
And I feel like that, uh, if we're looking at our defense in the run game, I feel like that's maybe where we've struggled a little bit is when those quarterbacks can, quarterbacks can run yeah. because they typically, the teams that have been been running against us are teams with really good running backs. So we're focused on them. Um, and then we kind of get, uh, we kind of lose track of the, of the, the quarterback. Well, um, you know, uh, Tanner Morgan's not that guy. He's not going to be, he's not going to be running all over the field, but I think, you know, um, outside of that, I think we've done a great job of holding the running backs that we have been playing against. You know, um, I don't think, uh, you know, excluding FAU, I don't think we've had a running back, um, you know, run for over a hundred yards against our defense yet. Um, which I think is awesome. I think that's great. Uh, especially that guy from Syracuse, he held him to either 30 or 40 rushing yards that was total. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. so, uh, I think our, uh, I think our defense can really do it against, uh, I think they can plug up Ibrahim, even though he's, you know, he's got 567 yards on the year already. Um, <laughs> he averages like six and a half yards per carry. Um, I, I still think that they can they can do a good job. He'll probably he might hit that hundred hundred yard mark because um, I'm sure they'll probably you know run it with him a lot. But uh, I think that we can still hold him hold him strong. But I think it's going to be a tight game. Uh, my prediction is like I think I said twenty eight twenty in our chat earlier this week or when I was talking to somebody. I'm I'm going with like a twenty eight twenty kind of grind it out um, win at the end. Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of in that. I'm, oh. Go ahead, Chris. I'm kind of in that same. I think it's going to be stopping the run and making the run. You know, I think if I think we have to limit how many possessions Minnesota has, and yeah. just grinding out the football on the ground and and doing the 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 gadget stuff. You know, the swing passes that are a pass but count as a run play, like Tyron Tracy or the screen passes, stuff like that. But I think just limiting, you know, playing keep away for lack of a better term. Um, cause that still wins football games. So, um, I still think like, I'm thinking like 24, 21, 25, 21, something, you know, like it's going to be, it's just going to be another one that my blood pressure and heart are just not going to be able to deal with. So yeah, <laughs> if I'm not sure. on next week's podcast, you know what? <clears throat> but I guess, uh, you know, the, the main thing here is we, we, we can't beat ourselves. I feel like Syracuse, um, yeah. you know, some of the calls are we, we definitely beat ourselves, uh, game and say we could argue you know we beat ourselves but i think if we come in we play mistake free football as close to mistake free football as we can get to we really kind of sell out to stop the run um don't force our dbs to uh you know be on islands back there and play every single snap try to limit those number of snaps force three and outs um this is a game i can see going into overtime honestly uh but chris your, your prediction was right there with mine i predicted 24 21 Purdue. Yeah, I think uh, the identity of our team's getting pretty well established this year that um, we want to establish the run and we're going to load up to stop the run and let our DBs make plays. And I, that's no difference this this week because we're playing another team that's got a really top run, top prospect running back and a quarterback that averages 200 to 250, so it's not like they throw it a ton. Um, but similar to Penn State and Syracuse, they're going to they're gonna try to establish the run early and we're going to have to watch for when they do try to take their shots. Um, but we've got to respect the run game. He's been over 100, I think 150 even, um, the last couple of games that we've played against them, against him. Um, so I think it's definitely, you know, that defensive game plan is to stop the run and, you know, to be mistake-free when we have to play the pass. And then offense is the same way I think that we we try to establish the run. You know, Downing and Mockby have, you know, really started to come into their own. And yeah. I think that they're a good one-two punch. Um, I don't think they're on the level of maybe DJ Markel, but, uh, you know, they're, they're establishing themselves. And, um, you know, I think they're going to provide great support for either AOC returning from injury or Burton that's, that's you know, trying to, you know, make his own name as the, as the QB at Purdue. So um, I think it's going to be similar. I think it's going to be low, low 20s, uh, maybe even in the teens if it's Burton, just because I think with, with him back there, we try to really, really uh, shorten the game and, and keep the clock running. But, um, uh, yeah. Markel, what what do you think the the ceiling is for this team? What do you think um, going forward this year, and um, just from what you've seen as how we've, you know, even in the two losses we've outplayed those teams for fifty plus minutes, it seems like, you know, what do you what do you think um, as far as the end of the season, you know, when we look back, what what this year is going to look like for us? I think the ceiling is really high. I think that um, this, I think tomorrow we'll tell what the ceiling could really be. So I, I can't give a full prediction until tomorrow but but uh, we beat minnesota we ride that 
that momentum, it can take us very, very, very far. And I think that we need to plan. Uh, we find ourselves, you know, one or two games from, from I won't call it big to championship game yet until we see how, <laughs> how Aiden's going to respond to injury. They're kind yeah. of being mute about, about what's going on with his situation. I have no clue. So hopefully, because I mean, I think he's averaging 333 yards a game, which is like number one in the nation. As far as uh, Minnesota's game, they've got to stop the run. And I think we have to keep it. I think it's going to be the Charlie Jones show. And mm-hmm. and uh, if Burton's going to be playing he's got it for are the quickest way to kill momentum um and i think uh, i'd probably take the boilers that's my prediction love it nice. awesome I, that's one thing i think and i we have i don't know what the deal is our special teams i can't think of the punter kick return mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and charlie jones one of the he's been one of the best at iowa so hopefully we want if he's gonna to be the guy still kick returning and punt returning. I'm thinking of special teams um, touchdown, and I'm hoping for some turnovers. We need turnovers, picks, mm-hmm. fumbles, yeah. get after uh, Tanner Moore. We have done uh, – I've been surprised at how decent we have been with, with creating turnovers. And Syracuse, had we caught half of them, we'd had like four turnovers that game. So yeah. mm-hmm. not for a yeah. lack of being there. Well, then also, hey, you just made it – and speaking of the last time we saw Minnesota, it also depends on how these big – and refs are going to be. <laughs> no, I wasn't going to say it, but yeah. Uh, now we're going to be here for another hour. Oh man! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh cool! It I just on- got not mad about Syracuse. <laughs> yeah, those. Yeah, that is a hundred percent true. If uh, if uh, everything is on the up and up, wow. then. And um, Minnesota was that game that they, you know, all these sports books refunded people their money because the call was so bad on the offensive PI. I've never I seen say, Payne that Durham. Payne Durham's going to go off. To, Payne Durham is going to go off tomorrow. He's going to make somebody's yards. mama cry. Payne train revenge game. I think so too. Yeah. He said he's still, he's still not over that. So. He did, oh, I yeah. bet. I love that. He, he said in his interview, he said, no, I haven't forgotten about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's so no, that's I wouldn't either. Uh, oh. I haven't forgotten about it. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah. Awesome. Well, it's it's awesome that we uh, there's so much optimism. It's great to talk about a team that has so much potential and that can really do a lot of great things. And, you know, I think we're all super thankful for, for Brom coming in and doing what he has done for the program and has continued to build upon and Babinski as well. And um, it's awesome. You know, it's it's awesome um, because uh, we as fans love watching Purdue football. We, we make memories with great people. We, we meet new friends. Um, you know, I didn't know any of these guys until last year or so. Um, which is uh, uh, crazy to think about because um, we just all we talk all the time now about uh, you know football and basketball and, and whatever else is going on and um, you know I think that's what Purdue's about we're we're um, we're the we're the the chip on our shoulder blue collar hardworking people that just that that <laughs> love that love Purdue that love the Boilermakers and want want nothing more than than the best for these guys and it's it's awesome to be in an environment now where you know those things are really starting to um tangibly happen and it's um man it's it's so special thinking about you know um all the the possibilities and the things that have changed in in the you know the year six now that brahm's been here and um you know hopefully we just continue to build on it and uh continue to uh to grow in the right direction and so uh, I just want to thank Markel so much for for being on the podcast today. It was it was awesome yeah, to have you on here. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you we so all much. love getting to pick your brain, hearing some stories, hearing about yeah. recruiting, um, your time as a player as well. We all love watching you and um, love hearing your perspective now, just as as a mm-hmm. fan and and hear about what you're doing. So thank yep. you so much for your time today. We really yep. appreciate it. And yep. everybody that listened, uh, we're really appreciative of you guys as well. We, we've we loved doing this. We always get super excited uh, every time Thursday or Friday comes around to um, record the next episode. And it's a lot of fun. So uh, uh, with that being said, you know, boiler up, hammer down, beat Minnesota, and we'll see you guys next week.